so um, one of the questions I've been getting quite a lot, which I just summarize as prep, is what exactly do you mean by prep? So I'm going to do a quick um, introduction on what it is that I do to prep and what it is that I think are some of the key pieces that you need in order to start your makeup. If you're going to want something to stay all day, if you're going to want it to look good, then you have to put that time and that prep work in to make sure it stays. So this is kind of a more elaborate version of what I did for the Feel Good Friday, but it's um, the nighttime ver version, if you will, because I know a lot of us are at home and at maximum we're seeing the one or two people in our support bubbles or small gatherings, maybe like that. Um, I hope everyone's staying safe, but I'm not here as the Corona board. I'm here to do what I know, which is makeup, which is skincare, which is hopefully making people feel good. So if you find this useful and if you like it, then give it a thumbs up and tell me if you want to do something more like this. So, so one of the first things that I do for prep is that I multitask. So for that, what it means for me is that essentially I'll be doing my hair at the same time that I'll be doing my skincare so that the makeup stays so on and so forth. And um, the questions I've been getting regarding um, prep are actually pretty simple. So this is kind of my hair out of a bun. One thing that I was introduced to by Rosie from The Londoner is this dry shampoo from the company London Labs. It's called Dry Wash. It smells so nice. It's got prickly pear, pear extract and a few other things. And I'll just work a bit of that into my hair, give it some life. And then I'll just let it like seep in, do its whole texturizing thing. I think it is more expensive than the standard dry shampoo. I used a coat, but I think the general retail price is around 22 pounds. So if you think that's ridiculous, feel free to use whatever it is that you use. But this for me really works. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna quickly brush my hair. I use the wet brush, which essentially is really good for detangling and <laughs> Yeah, you can see with dry shampoo, even with a fine one, that you've got to really get into the roots or work it in because otherwise you have these white grandma spots. And I am excited for the stage in my life where I get greys, but I'm not so excited that I want to paint it on. Either ways, if you've messed up like me, just brush. And um, what I'll do for the remainder of it is to put it up in a bun while I do my skincare. So you get the idea of that. Nicely brushed, took all of 15 seconds. This makes it a lot easier. And now I'm gonna move on to the skincare part. So while my bun is done, I'm just gonna talk you through my skincare ethos. Um, what I like to do when I talk about prep is making sure that everything is in place to make sure that the products on top of it are doing their best. This is a reason that I found that I've become a lot more minimal about my makeup routine in the last few years because I'm actually putting in all of that work into ingredients and products that work for me both within and, you know, on the outside. So without further ado, and despite how much fun everyone makes of me for this, I always begin by misting my spray uh, onto me so that the moisturizer sinks in better. Currently, I'm using the Revolution Brightening with Ginseng Spray, and I'll just go for a few across my face. And then that's kind of done. What I'm going to do after that is I... Um, use a moisturizer now i can use two depending on what time of the day it is for the morning i prefer the korean uh, brand called in between tone correcting cream this is really lovely full of good ingredients for you gives it a brightening boost but i do find that sometimes that means it can leave a whitish cast it looks very natural and even but i personally um, don't love it unless i'm wearing like foundation that day to make things back to my skin tone what I do prefer for the PM is currently the face lotion by Le Labo, which has niamicide, uh, basil, chamomile, and it smells really, really nice. I'm not sure if it has basil. I think I made that up. I think I'm trying to describe what my pizza last night had. But point being, it smells lovely. It gives that good for you, like, you can put it all around. You can um, get this, like good for you easily sinks in smells divine kind of cream as you're doing this focus here here these are the places where the depuffing is going to happen the circulation is going to start you can see as i'm rubbing it in i'm getting pinker but that is what you want it's i'm not applying 
anything um uh, i'm not applying anything but firm pressure on the spots that i know need it and lighter pressure on the spots that are a bit more sensitive over here but with that done i think that's what i'm going for a hydrated base that helps things stick onto it my next one for similar reasons would be applying a lip balm this one is a super cheap one because it smells like Reese's and I think I picked it up ages ago at Boots or somewhere like that um just to kind of make sure your lips are prepped too and you're getting that hydration that you need and um I promise you you're gonna see that skincare is gonna the makeup on top is gonna go a lot more easier because we've taken these steps now the last one that I would say is quite necessary I don't need it today because I just did it the other day but Personally, for me, if you're someone who does their brows or likes attention going to their brows and is comfortable tweezing them, then anytime I have very obvious hairs around this area and this area, which is my highlighting, which is highlighting zone in general, I would definitely pluck it. I don't go here. I don't really go too much on the sides here, obviously down the center a bit, but I like to leave that to the professionals. But considering I'm not going to see a professional for the next... I don't know, however long, we're making do with the tweezers and tweezers and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it and I do think that the lash serum I said in my last video that I was using has improved the quality of the areas that used to be more sparse. Now, this area before, it had very few hairs for whatever reason and this is a place that I like to add bulk because I like eyebrows that go quite strong. So I'm going a bit more into base and how I do it today so that you have all the details hey guys so feel free to stop right there if you want with your skincare but if you want an extra boost or you just want it to be more of a self-care session then i would highly recommend giving yourself a facial massage either with your own hands which there are many youtube techniques on how to do or what i would recommend if you have it is using a gua sha roller uh, a gua sha or a roller that is personally how I like to give my massages recently since being introduced to it. And I find that it has both a very cooling, like blood circulation pumping, but also very like, um, like a deep puffing effect. So I think it's like a great final step so that you look hyper alert and awake when <laughs> not, not in a terrifying manner, but just really fresh when you're finished with the makeup. Or if you just want to keep it at that, you can keep it at that. Um, I got mine off of amazon and it says that you can use it with a face oil as it's recommended now you can also use it with a cream and that is what i would recommend you do if you are going to um you know put on your makeup afterwards and you need it to be long lasting i personally do use a drop even with my makeup but that's just it's because my skin tone my skin uh, type will allow it like it can take oil without it looking oily or without it affecting the makeup in a bad way so I've just taken a very basic oil over here. I'm using the Botanics Oil by Boots with a uh, rose hip, with rose hip essence. And I'm just gonna gently pat it into the areas where I'm gonna mainly use the roller. And the roller's job essentially is to pull upwards when it comes to the face and pull downwards and away when it comes to the neck. So. There are many ways you can do this technique. The knuckle one is very popular. I'm saying these as options if you don't have the roller. You just use pressure along the stronger points of the face, cheekbone, jawbone, and you kind of lift it up, you know? But what I like about the roller is that it kind of makes that job easier by giving you that smooth surface and it is like, I didn't even have mine in the fridge, but it is so cooling and oh, you can just apply the right amount of pressure with it. I like to go into the temples. I will also be linking a proper one of how to properly use the roller. It's generally upwards and outwards and that's what I follow, but there is a proper 15 minute long YouTube video on how to do it. The Gua Sha is better for nighttime, I would say, if you don't have somewhere to go because it applies a lot more pressure so it could leave you with redness the redness i'm getting from this first of all that was from the knuckle massage it's not actually from this but this does the job 
so much better. So you generally get the idea for the face, you know. Actually, there is one more tiny installment I want to show you. It's the smaller sized one on this side of it, and you can use it particularly for your eye socket area. And oh my god, I don't know if they put menthol in this or not, but it is so cooling and refreshing. And I don't know, taking these few extra minutes out, adding these few self-care bits makes it a lot more about like an enjoyable process than the rush of getting makeup on. So yeah, it's not a step I would recommend if you don't have the time for it. All right, we've got the skin cool down, still going up a bit there. And yeah, and then with the flat side, now, this part, which I can do with the roller, and you can see a bit of an effect, at least I can see the redness kind of increasing, but this, I would definitely say, is a lot more effective with the gua sha, which has the curved edges which just hug your neck, whereas this one is pressing down the center. And I think that feeling is a lot more comfortable. So yeah, do this for however long you want. I would say one minute is a minimum up to five and if you're a queen with no other responsibilities that day then 10 but i can't see it being beneficial beyond that it's more about regular practice with these things rather than one-offs but hey if what you've got time for is just giving yourself a special treat now then use that as the time okay so there we go guys that is the final step of self-care sunday of the rituals and the routine series and as you can see my skin is plump even though i use the oil it's not overly oily it is still nice and glowy i'll probably put makeup on top of it and you can see that it'll still set um i'd be happy to film the makeup look but it is very similar to the feel good friday because that's what i find is personally most accessible in this time and the level of makeup i'm happy to put on so i'll probably do that on top but once again this is what I mean by my prep. I know it can seem a bit intense. Feel free to take what you want, leave out what you want, but I just wanted to give you the full picture, if you will. And um, I had a lot of fun filming it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if there are any follow-up questions, feel free.